this is a song I really like.
do you think God felt when He created mankind? When He created uh, everything. When He created the apples, He created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says that when God went through each stage, how did He feel? He looked and it was good. That's what the Bible says in Genesis. If you read through the creation stages, God looked and everything He created was good. It was great. And then He created man. He, he created man and woman, uh, man, and then he eventually created Eve. And it was good. What he did was good. So today we're going to talk about what took place in the sixth chapter of Genesis. It's an event in the Bible that's one of the most well-known stories in the Scriptures. You say, well, how can I learn from that today? How does that apply to me? We're, we're not going to... You know, even in the Bible, it promises there's not going to be a flood like that again, so why should I learn about it? Because the story has very little to do about the flood. The flood is just kind of the perks and the details that make it beautiful and outrageous to us. But the point that we're going to learn today about Noah and this story, when you walk out today, uh, I hope it does a miracle in your heart if you're going to watch this on video or if you're here. I hope it just does a miracle to you to realize how different you can be than everybody else around you. Because it's not easy to be different. People think of you, you know, how do they think of you? They think of you. But we're going to learn something about Noah that's totally amazing. If you were to go back to chapter 1 in Genesis, um, we're going to be looking at chapter 6 in a second, but let's just kind of talk about review. If you were to go back to chapter 1, you would see about the creation. You would read, uh, you would see how God created everything. Everything. Out of nothing. That's what God did. How He made the moon and the sun and the stars. Uh, beautiful, the universe. All sorts of things. He made them. Uh, just so. The Bible says He looked at it. It's good. And He created the earth and the animals. And He created all the stuff in there. All the stuff involved with it. Everything we enjoy today that we think is beautiful. God made then you go into Genesis chapter 2. Uh, he creates the man and the woman in the second chapter of Genesis. Um, we've talked about that before in our church. We have some videos out on that. Um, you move into chapter 3, we see all, all of a sudden a temptation for man. There's a temptation there. It's about sovereignty and power. Uh, and God is our ruler, our sovereign. So there's a temptation there going on in the sixth chapter. And then we see in verse 4, you know, uh, we see that man starts, you know, it's not so good anymore. Not so good. Uh, in the fourth chapter, Cain murders Abel. Uh, and at the end of verse 4, we talk, it talks a little bit about the family of Cain. Uh, there was a guy somewhere in those verses that uh, named Lemek who killed a man just for uh, for a small wound. And then, uh, you know, uh, in verse 5, after after all of those deaths, bad things that are starting, all of the coffins that have massed together early on in man's history, and all that stuff, a man named Enoch shows up. And the Bible says there's this man, he walks with God. And then he was not. Remember the story? So we go from all this trouble to one man that walks with God, and the Bible says, and then there's this man, Enoch, he walks with God, and then he was not. The Bible says he's one of the only of two men, I think it is, mentioned, that never see death. Because he just he was walking with God, he was alive, and then he was in existence. But uh, the Bible says God took him. Okay. Now we're in chapter 6. Enoch's gone. The guy's looking around to see, you know, what's going on. Uh, what I want to do is to share with you, if you hear nothing else, an expression that I want to make to you is to come on in. To come on in. In Noah's day, that expression would have been, come on in the ark. Come on in. Uh, you'll see why we mentioned that. 
Uh, I don't want for you today to be talking about Noah and the flood and the deluge. Uh, but you might think, you know, how are we going to talk about that when we got problems today? So why don't we spend time right now dealing with the problems we have? The problems are pretty much the same. As in, we're back and we're going to talk about that just very much. Um, this is one of the most interesting stories you can find. It's fascinating. So I'm meditating on whether I want to go into this a little deeper next week. The details of the work of the building uh, and what happens after what we're going to talk about today. All of us have heard it at some point, some place, maybe when you were a kid, you heard the story of Noah and Mark. Say, well, why, why do I need to know about that? I mean, uh, it's a neat story. Uh, we all need to look at, you know, everything God says, uh, what happened way back then, but, you know, how does, what does this have to do with you today? Luke chapter 17, verse 26 says this. You can jot it down, you can make a mental note. Luke chapter 17, it has everything to do with you. It has everything to do with you today. The story. So don't just put it away, you know, as, you, as the story you learned when you were a kid. That's everything you want to do where you're at right now. If you're going to watch this, I hope this does a miracle in your heart and God use it for somebody. <clears throat> it has everything to do with what you're going through today. Luke chapter 17, listen to what Jesus says. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of they drank and married. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and it swept them. So the Bible says. So the days of the Son of Man. In other words, Jesus said that Noah lived in days just like the days you're living in right now. Just like that. Well, how does God feel about it? They were days of spiritual decline. They were days of social dilemma. They were days of scientific development, shameless depravity, strong delusion. As a result, the Bible says that God sent a sudden destruction. He was so angry. The Bible says just as it was the days of Noah. Just as it was, that's what it says. So shall it be in the days when Jesus comes to finish up, to clean up. The day's going to be just like those days. There's a coming day when people are going to be going about their lives as you do. Just like you. They're going to be marrying carrying on, doing things like they've always done. Uh, they start rebelling against God. They start thumbing their nose in the face of God. They deny His commands. They defy His word. They deny His name. And the Bible says just like that. Uh, one of these days, God is going to destroy this world just like He did. That should be happening. Because it's going to happen just like it did in Noah's day, except it's not going to happen by flood, right? We have the promise of the scriptures. God looked at what he did, you know, had it given to him his heart. And so what I'm going to do come back and come back and Just like those days were, be advised. Uh, that's how the days are going to be. Not trying to be gloomy. Uh, I'm a very happy guy, you know. So I'm not a doom proclaimer. But the Bible does say, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the days of the Son of Man. So I think it'd be very, very helpful for you, and me, to see what it says about Noah and the ark. Uh, and the flood. I think it'd be helpful for us. So that's what we're going to do. We'll take a few minutes to do this, and we're going to leave from here, and you're going to feel great about it. I feel like if God was to see you in a crowd of people, 
Genesis creation, the fall, the flooding, the covenant, the whole Bible. I want you to focus on this verse. He says in chapter 6 and verse 18, then, after saying that no without grace, I will establish a covenant. If, uh, if, 
Go on in verse 6. The Bible says the Lord was sorry. Did you catch that? And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Now, uh, I don't know, I won't, don't want to pretend, pretend that I understand the thinking of God. I can only uh, imagine uh, my own thinking. How I would reason on it. If I had been there. Um, <clears throat> But I, 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 I guarantee you one thing. Uh, you can take this, you can take this thought. When God looks at the world, when God looks at this nation, when God sees the news we see on the news of the close, when God looks at this country and other countries, how do you think God feels? I'm sure God is grieved in his heart. And there are things happening today that haven't happened in years. There are new ideas and things happening today, and I'm not going to be a, a political preacher, but if you watch the news, you figure that out yourself. Things that are wrong that are preached as right. And the Bible is clear about a lot of things. God is grieved in his heart, no doubt. And I'll say this, uh, uh, say that if I were God, and it's probably good I'm not God, but if I were God, or you were God, and you looked today at mankind, and you put on the earth, uh, think about it, there's days of sin, there's days of sorrow, there's days of suffering, just like in the days of Verse 7 says this, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I made them. So if you don't I want the fruit of sin, stay out of the orchard. You might be able to pick your sin, but you're not going to pick the consequence of it. Because sin not only breaks the heart of God, sin brings a heavy load. God said, if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't even have made you the pitiful, perverse, and rebellious world. So God said, I'm going to destroy them. I'm going to wipe them off the earth. I made that pretty clear in my You say, but, no, Stephen, you're still here. Uh, God was going to destroy uh, the earth, and he said that, why are we still here? If he was so mad, why didn't he do it? He's God. Most of us, when we get mad, we act on it pretty quick. I know Christian. Why are we still here if God said it? His Bible is quoted. It's first. It's, it's inspired. I'll tell you, there's only one reason why. You and I are here tonight. There's only one. Going back to this chapter, this is one reason I'm here. And it's found in verse 8. And it says, But, remember, but no one found grace to God. God was going to do it. He's right there. Before I look down, I want you to know if God had 
left those two words out of the scriptures. They weren't there. But and the grace. If those words weren't found in the Bible, you probably wouldn't be here today. That's how back it was. The whole Bible would have stopped. Right there. And Noah, ah, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord and got stopped. That's why God spared Noah. Noah was spared, he was a spared man because Noah was a saved man. He was saved. Then he was spared. That's why I want you to, to remember this, verse 8, this phrase, a God-oriented devotion. A God-centered devotion. Let me show you several things about this man named Noah. Look down in verse number 8. Notice his conversation. He says down there in verse number 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. I used to think that Noah was saved because he was a good man. Let me tell you something. As we go through this, Noah wasn't saved because he was a good man. Noah was a good man because he was a godly man. He was a godly man. He was a godly man because he was a saint. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Have you ever heard this little phrase, uh, all good people go to heaven? Right? All good people go to heaven. We've heard it. No! Not everybody goes to heaven. Good. Not everybody that's good goes to heaven. Not everybody talking about heaven goes to heaven. Be nice. Not everybody is going to heaven. Only those who are saved. Noah wasn't saved because he was good. Noah was saved because of God's grace. Well, what is God's grace then? Well, if you look close, grace is when you get something don't deserve. Now stop. Mercy. Mercy is when you don't get something you do deserve. You should have gotten five years, but you didn't. Judge. It's merciful. You deserve it. That's not grace. Grace is when you get something you, you don't deserve. Um, mercy, uh, so, is when you don't get something that you do deserve. But grace is when you get something that you do not deserve. Dr. Rogers used to teach us that grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what grace is. That's what grace is. So that's the difference between Noah and everybody else that lived uh, on the top of God's earth in those days. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Noah wasn't saved because he built the ark. He wasn't saved because of the ark. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And if you don't hear anything else that I say today, uh, don't miss this. Noah was not saved because he built the ark. Noah built that ark because he was saved. That's why he built the ark. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Not only in conversion. If you look down in the verses of number 9, notice his character. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man. The word there for just means righteous or justified. Because Noah was a saved man, he was also a sanctified man. Because Noah had accepted God, and God had accepted Noah. Noah was righteous before God, and Noah was right with God. Romans chapter 3 and verse 28, the Bible says, Therefore we conclude that man is justified by faith, by faith, apart from the deeds of the law. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith. You see Noah's conversion there. Number 8. 
uh, in verse number 8. You see Noah's character, though, in verse number 9. And if you keep reading uh, in verse number 9, you're going to notice his conduct. Because the Bible says that he was perfect in his generations. Now, the word perfect there doesn't mean, you know, that he was perfect. It comes from the Hebrew word tainment. Uh, it's where we get the word contaminated from. What that word literally means is without blot, without blemish, without spot, without stain. What you and I would say today is, he was blameless in his generations. He was blameless in his generation. Noah wasn't sinless before God because all sin comes short of the glory of God. Look here. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of us deserve what? A chance. Huh? A chance. We deserve a chance. We get a chance. But if you look at our general condition, is that we're all sin because we come from sin, so we're made of sin. We all would deserve a what? We didn't have a ransom sacrifice, we would be what? We would be condemned. Right? And so the biblical thought of hell comes up. That's what you, you would qualify for. Uh, all the sin comes short of the glory of God. <clears throat> Noah wasn't sinless then, but he was blameless before men. In other words, um, in other words, when everybody looks at Noah, I'll look right here. When everybody looked at Noah without ever saying a word, without ever saying a word, right? When people watch Noah, watch him move around, maybe in the office, uh, maybe uh, maybe at the games, right? Uh, wherever you go, maybe maybe in the park, uh, maybe as a family member, whatever it is, people would watch him. People would look at Noah. When everybody looked at him without saying a word, without ever opening his Bible, without ever wearing a suit on Sunday. They didn't know anything about Noah like that. Without ever saying a word, without ever opening his Bible, without ever wearing a suit, without sitting in a pew, without singing, those sorts of things. When people looked at Noah, they just tell them. It was something different. He said, I want to understand about this. No, what is he doing? He doesn't go out with us. He doesn't party with us. What's the deal with this guy? We all like him. Why doesn't he come with us? Why doesn't he come part of us? Sometimes he, you know, we want him to go to the movies we watch. Maybe he doesn't want to. He just said, I don't want to go. I just don't understand. What's so different about him? Maybe he thinks he's better than us. No, Noah stuck out like a rose bush in a junkyard. But one pastor said it was like a tulip in a junkyard. A dry, barren junkyard, there's a tulip. That's what Noah said. Yeah. Okay, so we, we examine him. Uh, is there something unique about us? Today, we're living in a similar time. Is there something different about you? Is there something different about you compared to all, all the other people you hang around with? You're running with. Maybe there's something just different. Or you just fit in. Maybe you'll fit in for a while. I need to find out there's something different. your best behavior is when preachers are around. Uh, there's a story here about a preacher who used to go visit people. And uh, in the old days, he would knock on their door. This is years ago. Years ago before we all walked on doors. Uh, he would knock on their door and he would just open it and he'd start walking in and he'd go visit his, his people. Uh, and everybody loved him and everybody liked him, but they sure feared his visit because he would come during the daytime. He'd come in the afternoon. He'd come in the evening. <laughs> Imagine that. You turn around your living room, your pastor sitting in the chair. That's what he would do. Uh, this pastor had an expression that he would say as he's walking in their house. This is what he would say. He'd say, the preacher's here, 
Put away the beer! As you walk around. The point isn't the story about the preacher, but the point is, how do we act? We act one way in church, and we act one way somewhere else. Or we have a character. We'll be different all the time. Uh, that's what God does to you. church has become so worldly and the world has become so churchy. It's hard to tell what works is what's true. That's what we're living in today. So the Bible tells us those things about Noah. Why does it tell us those things about Noah? So we can look at ourselves. If you were, if you look there, and turn, uh, continuing in verse number 9, this is what it says. Noah walked with God. Noah walked with God. By the way, if you look right there, uh, we've talked about it before. Uh, most of us want to be true. I personally, I, I, I want to be like Enoch. You know. The Bible doesn't say much about Enoch. You know. We don't know much about it. It's amazing. Because he had a special relationship with God. The Bible says he walked with God. He walked with God, and then all of a sudden he was no more. He doesn't say he died. We don't know anything about him. We just know that at the point when when he got ready to go, God just took him. I want to be like Enoch. So I don't see death. Enoch never seen death. God just took him. That's how much of uh, a relation they had. Enoch walked. I want to be like Enoch. I want to be like Noah. I want to walk with God. It hasn't been easy. It had to come out of a different place. So I want to walk with God. I know you want to walk with God. Um, I'm not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to be perfect. So we have to be fighters. Sometimes I'm going to blow it. Sometimes you're going to blow it. you're going to feel bad about it. Sometimes you're just going to blow it. You're going to mess up. But, but I want to tell you, uh, I want people to say, uh, there goes a man who wants to be. That's what the Bible says about it. There's no telling how many people on the face of the earth at that time, I don't know how many people there were. Uh, if you count them, I don't know how long it would take. I don't know. Uh, yet, out of all those people, one, one person, Noah, only Noah one. can't be that easy to walk with God. Only Noah. Here's the thing. Everybody else was out, out of step with God. Everybody was out of step back then with God. Uh, and Noah was right in step. I don't know. Maybe if they had church back then, he would have been the there or something. I don't know. Maybe he would have been, uh, maybe he would have just been, you know, like one of those guys, you know, that just has to get and takes care of their family and, and, and has a love for them. I don't know. But I do know that as a result, he had, he marched to the beat of a different drum. Uh, uh, there's a story here, I'll just mention it. It's about a band competition. Uh, there's a story about this guy, a band director. Uh, he was up there watching, you know, his, his team. Uh, they had practiced, they already had choreographed all this stuff. All the musicians and the band members were playing. Uh, it was just like it was supposed to be. It was fantastic. Just a short story. Uh, all of the musicians were doing exactly what they wanted to do. He's watching from, from uh, Except one guy. One guy of the band. Uh, he's playing the trombone. And this guy, he's playing the trombone. When they said go this way, he went this way. Um, in, in the choreograph, everything they practiced. He never did. He just couldn't do it right. Uh, when they said, you know, come this way, he went that way. Always out of step. He was not walking with them. They couldn't figure out what's going on with this one guy. 
He knows better. They were trying to figure out, you know, what the deal was with him. So the band director goes all the way down to the field. He walks up to the guy. He yells at him. And he can't hear him. Until he gets right up to the guy. Uh, gets right up and he notices he has earbuds in. And he's listening to an entirely different song. Trying to play cool. He to something. Different. <laughs> yeah. Right? He was marching to a different team. He didn't know it. He didn't know it. He just let it seep in and start to do its own thing. We're going to be marching to the beat of a different drummer. Noah said, I'm not going to live the way you live. I'm not going to talk the way you talk. I'm not going to go where you go. I'm not going to do what you do. Noah walked with God. That's why. If you look down in verse 22, he also talks about being confident uh, in his God. <clears throat> you look down in verse 22, it says, Thus Noah did according to all the God's commandments. So he did it. Uh, go over to chapter 7 and verse 5. Uh, look down there, it says, And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded. Look right there. He believed God, and because he believed God, he obeyed God. And as you study through this, uh, it's because of his confidence. It's a commitment that God elected Noah to God's Hall of Fame in Hebrews. We listed all of those you know, faith. Of course, he's there. Of course, he's there. If God ever has another one, I hope you're there. I hope you're on the Hall of Fame list. Right? Because we could be, we could be some, you know, imagine that. There would be some direct dimension because of remaining faithful to God, even when it's hard for us. Okay. So Noah was not saved because he was good. We're finishing this up. Uh, I'll just say that. Noah was not saved because he was good. Right? Noah was not saved because he was good. Keep going to He was saved by grace. In that Hebrews list of champions of faith, the Bible says, by faith, Noah, I want you to understand. I'm going to destroy the whole world. I'm going to do it. Not Noah. Because of you. You know, you're a good guy. Uh, you're a good guy. You're a faithful guy. Right? right? Uh, because of my grace. Uh, I'm going to destroy it. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it with a flood. And so Noah said, well, God, what in the world is a flood? And God said, well, a flood is what happens when it rains. And so Noah said, what's well, the next question? What is rain? Noah didn't even know what the rain was. Remember, uh, up to Genesis chapter 6, it never rained. You never heard about rain? It never rained. They had never seen a drop of rain. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, uh, what you're going to find is the Bible set up, uh, uh, the Bible says that up to that point, God watered the earth by mist to the ground. So it was a change God made. It. A change then in Genesis. And God said to Noah, it's going to rain. You don't know what it is, just put it down on the counter. I know you don't understand it. I know you don't know what it is. But I'm going to do it for 40 days and 40 nights, and the whole world is going to lift in water from the flood. <clears throat> Not only had he never heard the rain, Noah was 500 miles from the nearest even body of water. And God said to Noah, Noah, I want you to build an ark. Uh, that's like uh, you and me going to, I don't know, Mojave Desert. Okay? Uh, if we were to go to Mojave Desert, hundreds of miles from anywhere and trying to build a speed boat. And yet the Bible says for 120 years Noah got the wood. He got the wood, his hammer, and he got the nails. And he got to work. He measured everything out, did what God told him. The Bible says that Noah began to hammer and he saw it and he nailed and built it. Can you imagine being mocked, laughed at, and ridiculed for being different? For doing what God you know, wanted him to do? Can you imagine how they made fun of him? You know, we live in a world we, we don't want anybody to say anything bad about us. We, we don't want anything thing to be said negative about us. You know, people become, uh, you know, they want to end their lives sometimes because of what happens on social media. Because things that people do is hurtful things. We don't want that. Can you imagine living at this time for Noah and his family? It would have been worth it. Let me wind this down now.
share with you, you know, we've talked about, about, about this before in the church, what real faith is. Um, sometimes we see expressions of faith on TV that aren't necessarily faith. Uh, we call them, uh, uh, what's the word we call them? Real faith is when you obey God like no one. When you say, God, if you say it, I'll do it. I don't care if anybody laughs at me. I don't care if I'm a little different. I don't care if they make, make fun of me. I don't care what it looks like. If they think it's foolish or futile. I don't care if I don't see a rain cloud in the sky. I don't care if I live 500 miles from here as one water. I don't want to I don't care if I lose all my friends. Or if I thought to lose all my friends. If you've ever been through a radical change, except for Jesus in your heart. Okay, so when we think about this story, I'll just put this in the base. Uh, 
any other thoughts on that? What makes a difference? Having faith. Having faith, right? It made a difference back then. It's going to make a difference today because it's going through the same stuff. Jesus makes a difference. Ultimately, it's Jesus. Because Jesus died for us. And because of Jesus, we can approach God. Jesus changed everything. He changed the law. something in Noah. What was it? God found, he found grace. And grace is something God's already told you that you can have. We have to accept this grace. We don't have to just we, we, God just doesn't just you know say, okay, here you go now you have it. God says, here you go what are you going to do with it? You can accept it? If you accept me you take Jesus into your heart you know that you need him and then 